<laughs> rude Van Nistelrooy ball, guys. Rude ball. Rude. 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 Listen, the shackles have been removed. The shackles have been removed. Games that United have scored four plus goals. Rude Van Nistelrooy won. Ten Hag won. In his first game, he already matched what Ten Hag did for a little bit over two years. The shackles have been removed, guys. Today, what we watched was real Manchester United football. Real attacking football. High-intensity football. Attacking football. Entertaining football. I loved it. Every bit of it today. And I know, I know what's happening. If you're a rival and you're watching this... And you're a minute into the video, you're like, oh, look, he's shamelessly celebrating, it's just Leicester. Guess what? It is not just Leicester. Because I've seen us, since last season, into this season, struggle against opposition that is probably as poor as Leicester were today, if not worse. I didn't forget when we lost to Newcastle C team last season 3-0 and got knocked out in the same exact competition. It might have been the same exact round as well. I didn't forget when we, we had to beat Coventry City on, th uh, on penalties when we drew 3-3. Three, three. I didn't forget when we struggled against Newport County and we needed two late goals to win 4-2. I didn't forget these games. Let's not act like United have been putting these type of teams to the sword. We have it. We've been struggling with all type of opposition. We've been playing with a lack of intensity, a lack of creativity, a lack of planning, a lack of everything. <coughs> Excuse me. And today you watch United, you would think this is a completely different team. And listen, congrats to Ruud van Nistelrooy on his first game. I understand the opposition isn't the strongest, but today we were clear. And I can't tell you the last time we were clear of any opponent. We have won games where I'm like, you know what? Today was papering over the cracks. Today, no one could say that. United have outclassed Leicester City from start to end. And if I could go and speak on every individual performance today, I'd probably take way over the, the regular 10 to 15 minutes that I use every time to record a video. So I got to keep it a little bit quicker. And to the point and it's just save it for another day to analyze these performances a little bit more because number one this this win the main thing i'm taking out of this win today is obviously the morale going into the game on sunday against chelsea who by the way just got knocked up to newcastle so they have now a little bit of pressure going into that game after not beating us at old trafford for 11 years i don't think they have a chance to make it 12 and i'm gonna say it from now united today absolutely amazing from the goalkeeper to the front line some players had better performances than others, but the overall, everyone today looked good. Bender, listen, we conceded the two goals, but none of them were on him. If anything, the only negative I could call out is our box defending today. Poor defending on both set pieces. A bit of a little bit of luck for both goals on, on, on Leicester to, to, to be scored, but, but still, our box defending wasn't the best. But other than that, our defending in general looked good. Martinez didn't look the worst in left back. Dallo looked good in, in, in right back. And if anything, finally Dallo got an assist. After the last two games where he missed that one-on-one -on -one against West Ham, and if you remember the game before against uh, uh, Fenerbahce where he messed up that pass where it could have been an easy tap-in for Rashford, he finally gets a GA today and finally makes the right decision. Overall, he had a good game. He looked good, good down that uh, right-hand side, overlapping a lot, tracking back a lot. Everyone today, by the way, was tracking back, running. Our pressing, our counter-press was absolutely amazing, which brings me to, to the midfield. The midfield today. Hats off. Hats off to Casemiro and Ugarte. Today, they were both amazing. Ugarte, everywhere. He was everywhere on the pitch today. So many interceptions. Even when he doesn't win the ball, he presses well. He's, his timing of his pressing was absolutely amazing today. The counter press was absolutely amazing. Casemiro, two goals. Listen, his. I think this guy might be the best. I tweeted this. He might be the best aerial duel winner in the world. And he does it, does it on both sides. And he was on both sides today in both boxes. Absolutely amazing. Gets the header. Needed a little bit of luck today to get that goal because it bounced off two, both posts and it gets the rebound. But also on the other end, he didn't look like his legs was gone today. And I'm going to say this and I say this again. In the eight, as long as you keep Casemiro away from the buildup, he has his place in this team. And today he proved it. That goal he scored, by the way, the first goal. What an absolute rocket to make it 1-0. I thought the ball was, I thought the ball was missed because the goalkeeper didn't even try to jump. I was like, oh yeah, it's, it's out. The way he put that, that is the absolute definition of uh, top bins. If, if you look up the dictionary of top, top bins, that goal should be there. 
because it's absolutely tough bins to make it 1-0. Bruno gets his, himself on the score sheet actually today twice. Listen, the free kick is scored. There's not much to say about it. Even he laughed about it because it's a fluke goal, but it's good to see him on the score sheet. And the second goal was even better because I forgot who intercepted it and played it uh, in behind for Bruno. And Bruno, just the way he rounded up the goalkeeper, took his time and just smashed it into the goal when he didn't need to. It, 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 it was it was good to watch. Garnacho, listen, Garnacho just had another typical Garnacho game. He did get on the score sheet. A lot of decision making in the final third wasn't the best. Didn't see anything that I didn't know about Garnacho already, but it was good to see him on the score sheet as well. Rashford did his thing. I think he had an assist to one of the goals. I, I don't remember, but didn't have the best game, and but also didn't stand out in any bad way. I guess the only one we we need to highlight is Xerxes. Xerxes just didn't look amazing today. And I like Xerxes, and I've spoken about him a lot. But he's going to have a lot of learning to do. And if you was watching my watch along, you probably heard me say this, but I'm going to repeat this again for the people that are watching it just for the for the match reaction. Shout out to everyone, anyways, who watched the watch along. Xerxes is going to have to learn how to play a little bit beyond his pace. I feel like Xerxes, one of the issues that I noticed about him is that the game just kind of like... The game gets too quick for him sometimes. And sometimes his his movement and his decision making needs to be a little bit quicker. It was unfortunate not to be on the score sheet today. He had a couple of decent shots. He worked hard off the ball. I'll give him that. But on the ball, he probably in another day, he gets lucky and he gets one of these goals. That ball that Delo scored to Garnacho in the second half, maybe another day he'd be the one making that run. That ball that fell to Casimiro for the third goal when it, when it hit the bar. Maybe another day that ball falls to him. So he didn't really have the luck on his side today. But he needs to work a lot on his game because he, he becomes a little bit too stagnant sometimes. And I understand I prefer him more when the game is slowed down. And I think he's going to be important for us in certain big games where the game is a little bit more... When the, when the game is not a ping pong game, I think I feel like the game bypasses him. And today he kind of showed that. I felt like Hoyland would have been a better fit in that first half. But... Still did a few things. He just he just needs to work on his game. He probably this summer is gonna be big for him, by the way. Um, the offseason. Because I, I think number one, he needs to work on his his agility a little bit because he's a little bit less agile. He's just very good on the ball, and I, I don't think that should be enough to bail you out. You get what I'm saying? Like there's times where I feel like he makes the run a little bit too late, or instead of running, he wants the ball to feet, which is why I'm saying he's gonna have to work on a lot. Like he needs to do a lot of what Hoyland does. And Hoyland equally needs to learn a lot of what Xerxes does. They they both actually need to learn off each other. But overall today, listen, the performance was good. It was good to see a score four goals in the in the first half. Second half, we, we made some changes. Brought on brought on Wheatley late in the half. Uh, 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 obviously, Rashford. There's something about Rashford always being subbed off in 60 minutes. He got subbed off and Ahmad came on. And listen, Ahmad, just that smile... That smile on his face when he was coming on, he just looked to say he didn't, he wasn't bothered today that he was a bench. And that's what I love. I need all these players to accept their roles at times because I don't think most of them are good enough to play in game in, game out for 90 minutes, anyways. So it was good to see on a smile on his face coming on for 30 minutes, which is the polar opposite of what happened in the Fenerbahce game when he was coming on for two minutes. He was absolutely pissed. Today, he looked happy to be coming on, even though he didn't start. And that didn't affect his, his, his attitude at all. He was running. He was creating. He was passing. He was crossing. He was defending. He was doing everything. He was shooting a little bit too much on Loma, but lied, I'm not going to lie to you. He, he really wanted that goal. And listen, if he scored that overhead kick, we'd be having a different conversation right now. But good to see the, 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 the positive impact, I should say, from these subs. Because it's one thing we've been criticizing for a while. Maybe on another day, United don't even score for, for in the first half. The goal is, the, the game is close. We come on in the second half and we look sluggish. We look slow. We look like we don't believe. There's no intensity. And today we kind of, I would say we kind of started the second half slow, but I think that's more down to the fact that Leicester were down two goals and they needed to score. So we allowed them a little bit. And then we start getting the goal. And if anything, we controlled more in the second half anyways. So very happy to see this game and very happy to see the positive uh, 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 impact from most of these players. There's a lot to take from this game into the city game, city, uh, into the Chelsea game on Sunday. And as I said, the biggest thing to me is that they're gonna go in with a positive mentality. Most of them were on the score sheet. Most of them had good performances. Most of them are gonna be looking forward to Sunday. And uh, listen, I'm gonna say it from now to Chelsea fans. I'm gonna be doing a match preview on my channel, anyways. But I'm gonna say it from now. You you're not coming into Sunday, and this is a straw in the park. There's a reason why you haven't beat us in 11 years at our stadium. The stadium is going to be rocking. A lot of these players are going to be pumped up. The fans are going to be pumped up. They're going to take this result 
as a positive thing because most of them today remember that we actually play good football. Like, it's it's funny. It's funny to think the minute Ten Hag is gone, most of these players actually look half decent again. Which is why I started with a video saying that the shackles are removed. Some of these players got to express themselves today and they'll be looking forward to Sunday again. Sunday, listen, I, I'm, I'm I'm much com more confident going into Sunday now. Not necessarily because of the opposition. Of course, we're going to approach the game different. Leicester are a are, 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 are far less inferior team than Chelsea. Chelsea were, be, will be much more uh, proactive than, than, than Leicester are. They're probably not going to make this the same mistakes that Leicester were doing. They were very poor with the ball today, Leicester. They gave us the ball a lot, even though our press was good and all that. But they made it easy for us. Obviously, we're not going to get all that from Chelsea. But the stadium is going to be rocking. We'll be on the front end. We'll try to score early. And listen, I fancy our chances a little bit more now with this bounce back. Because the bounce back today, it's all fun and games. It's in the Carabao Cup. But the real bounce back I want to see is on Sunday. I want to, I want to see us replicate this against Chelsea on Sunday. It, we, will, we probably won't score for I'll be honest with you. It's fine. Because Chelsea is much better. I don't want to disrespect Chelsea. But I, I want to see the same intensity. I want to see the same game plan. I want to see our front line. Listen, I didn't even talk about a lot of things in depth today, but our back line, I want to see our back line sitting on the halfway line confidently like we are today. I want to see my fullbacks push forward again. I want to see us when we're being pressed, we're not panicking like we did today. No mistakes from anyone. I don't, I don't remember any mistakes where we gave away the ball in crucial situations. I want to see that. And when Chelsea tried to do the same against us, I expect the high press. I expect the counter press. I expect the fullbacks to be up there to execute the press per perfectly. I expect to see a lot from what I've seen today replicated on Sunday. With keeping in mind that obviously you're playing a different team that has much more quality and much more is going to be the game is going to be approached much a lot more uh, different tactically. But listen, let me know your thoughts about the game. I don't want to ramble on for too long. I'm going to do a preview on my channel tomorrow anyway, so watch out to that. Make sure the notification bell is on. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is it just a bounce back because it's, is it just Leicester or the United actually look a lot more convincing and a lot more better now that they have a different voice to listen to in Rude Van Nistelrooy with different instructions, different charisma, just someone who gets the club and gets the intensity that the team should be playing at. Let me know all these thoughts in the comments. And as I said, obviously, as always, like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And um, as I said, I'll see you guys tomorrow on the channel.